Hi, my name is Thorley, and I'm the pastor of the Praise Fellowship Seventh-day Adventist Church in South Bend, Indiana. Thank you for stopping by Praise Fellowship, where it's worth the trip to come to Praise Fellowship. Our desire is to connect with you, our audience, our community, through worship, through relationship, and through the Word. And as you're here, please enjoy today's message. Happy Sabbath again to all of you. How many can testify at this moment that we just want God? I think that many times, like, you can enter the Christian walk and that there can be a catch or some sort of interest, but God calls us to follow him without interest, disinterestedly, just wanting one thing. God himself. And the beautiful thing is that once we go through this life, what we call oftentimes our pilgrim journey, when we come to the end of it all, we will have God, we will be in his presence forever. It indeed is uh, on the way there, obviously. We have to go through life in this world which is a crazy world, and this way I want to give introduction to the message. The fact that, I mean, if we were to just look at this week alone, uh, probably in our own lives and maybe in the world around us, a lot has gone down. A lot of drama, a lot of issues, a lot of conflict, um, a lot of false truths and lies even. But we have a Lord you and I, we have a Lord that said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. And so God wants to teach us in his truth as it is in Jesus, in the midst of a world in which there are so many worldviews, so many opinions, so many messages that are given about and so many voices and there is one voice that ultimately matters and that is the voice of the living God we continue with the series right uh so what and so as we have as we are looking at the doctrines uh, last week we looked at the doctrine of the trinity um some of us may ask, well, what's the need for doctrine? Don't I just need Jesus and that's it and doctrine doesn't really matter? Well, the thing about doctrine is that it helps us be informed in a world in which there's a bunch of misinformation about Jesus Christ. And so as we present these truths um, from the source, from Scripture itself, we hope that it is an, a, a rule of instruction for us and for all of you and that we may learn more about God and know God personally through what he has revealed to us. Because without the teaching of God, we can easily be led astray. I saw recently uh, the results of a, of a survey that really speak to this, how a minority of Christian pastors in this country have a biblical worldview. About 40% of pastors. Meaning that the majority either believe in something else or they'll take stuff from the Bible, 
They'll take stuff that is taught in secularism and other ideas and other worldviews, and they mix it together. That is called syncretism. In the midst of all of that, that's why we want to follow and be a people of the Word of God. And to the point that every, and any one of us who may come up here and present to you all a message, you, as God's people, may fact check us, may keep us accountable on the basis of the word of the living God, which is the instruction that he has left us. It is the lamp unto our feet and the light unto our path. It is bread and nurture to our spiritual hunger. It is what the word and the instruction of God that teaches us who we are, where we come from, and where we're going, and more importantly, whose we are. So we must know what we stand upon and what we believe in. So that is why we want to go through this series. And today we continue our series, So What? with the doctrine of the Holy Spirit. Our passage for today is found in the book of Acts, chapter 5, which Mila read for us. And you may all turn with me there to the book of Acts chapter 5, and we'll be looking once again at the passage from verses 1 to 11. Acts 5, 1 to 11. And I'll be reading from the NIV, which says, Now a man named Ananias, together with his wife Sapphira, also sold a piece of property. With his wife's full knowledge... He kept back part of the money for himself, but brought the rest and put it at the apostles' feet. Then Peter said, Ananias, how is it that Satan has so filled your heart that you have lied to the Holy Spirit and have kept for yourself some of the money you received for the land? Didn't it belong to you before it was sold? And after it was sold, wasn't the money at your disposal? What made you think of doing such a thing? You have not lied just to human beings, but to God. When Ananias heard this, he fell down and died. And great fear seized all who heard what had happened. Then some young men came forward, wrapped up his body, and carried him out and buried him. About three hours later, his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. Peter asked her, tell me, is this the price you and Ananias got for the land? Yes, she said, that is the price. Peter said to her, how could you conspire to test the spirit of the Lord? Listen. The feet of the men who buried your husband are at the door, and they will carry you out also. At that moment, she fell down at his feet and died. Then the young men came in and, finding her dead, carried her out and buried her beside her husband. Great fear seized the whole church and all who heard about these events. With this passage in mind, uh, let us pray briefly. We thank you, Lord, for this day and for the opportunity that we've had to worship you, Lord. And we simply seek you. Teach us according to your word. And God, we pray for your Holy Spirit among us and within us and to fill us. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Who is the Holy Spirit? What is he like? What does he do, and why should we care? So I uh, recently found out that apparently there's going to be a new season, 33 seasons, of Dancing with the Stars. I don't know who here follows the show. My mom and I, years ago, watched some of it. But I'm not going to talk to you about Dancing with the Stars, rather about me when I was dancing with the Zambians. What do I mean now? Uh, I'm not saying that I'm a dancer or none of that. No, let me explain. So 
Last year, as I told you that I was on a mission trip where, where myself and a group of seminarians, we saw the power of God in Zambia uh, in an evangelistic series. At the end of this series, one of the things that I did with the church that I was preaching at is that, well, we gathered at the church after the baptisms, and so all of a sudden I hear, like, some music being played, like, like African music, and then I see the people just, like, dancing in a line, and they're, like, just going and going, and they're, like, making their move and whatever, and then they're, and then they're just going, uh, like, in a single file line to the front of the church, and they are starting to, like, form a circle and just celebrate the fact that God had worked powerfully that day. And so I was, like, on the side <laughs> watching... <laughs> And one of the elders was, and I'm like, oh, okay, I see what they're doing. Okay, okay. And one of the elders was like, uh, you want to follow along? I'm like, well, what are you, like, what is the step that you're doing? And, the, and they're like, okay. So watching along was not enough for them. <laughs> and so the elder that's next to me, he starts, like, showing me the steps that they were, ta- that they, that they were doing. I don't, I, I don't even remember clearly. <laughs> I'm only a little bit. And, and so I was, like, following a little bit, but this still wasn't enough. Me trying to repeat the steps that he was doing, it wasn't enough. And so then he takes me with him to the back of the line, as following them, and then people just start staring at me. And then I start to do the steps and dance with these people in their celebration. It wasn't enough for me just to watch just to hear the music. It wasn't enough for me just to watch them take the steps and watch them dance. It wasn't even enough for me to try to just follow along from where I was. I had to join them in their celebration, and I had to dance with them. In a similar manner, in the Christian walk, the walk with Jesus is a walk with him, by his side, to the point that he says that I abide in you and you in me. And we go step by step with the Spirit. Galatians chapter 5 says that since we live, as Christians, since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Step by step with Jesus is the way we go. There is no other way but to trust the Lord all the way in our lives. And so in a similar manner, this is what was happening in the early church. The background to the story that we read in the passage today. So Jesus went up to heaven and he went before the Father. And as the church gathered together in the room, the upper room, and they prayed the power of of the Spirit was manifested among them to the point that in Acts 2, it says that where they were, they were full of the Holy Spirit and tongues of fire came upon them. And when the Holy Spirit came among the church of God, there were powerful things that were happening. People were speaking in different languages of all the people who had come to the Feast of Pentecost at Jerusalem at that moment. They were preaching the word of God, not like scared, not fearing rejection, but with boldness because that's what the Spirit does. And they, were, and they saw miracles happen among them and great works and thousands of people being baptized and giving their lives to Jesus Christ. And another one of the things that the Spirit, that, that is the effect of the Holy Spirit in a community is that he brings people together. And so you can read with me in Acts chapter 4, verse 32, what we want to point out as we're considering this story and then the features of the, 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 features of the Holy Spirit, his characteristics. It says in Acts 4, 32, all the believers were with one heart and one mind. No one claimed that any of their possessions was their own, but they shared everything that they had. The church was a powerful example of the love of God, of faith in Him, and of community and humility in Jesus 
Christ. But it was not without issues. And we find it in the story that we read. You see, the Spirit of God promotes harmony, but the Spirit of the world promotes division and bad fruits and even lies and untruthfulness. And so what we, what we read in this passage and heard when Mila read is that there was a couple that they decided to do something against the current. Because people were selling their property and laying it at the apostles' feet and saying, this is all my livelihood. I'm giving my life for the cause of God. But these people decided together that, well, we're going to give but we're going to keep a little something for ourselves, and they're not going to know about it. No worries. But the truth is that there is a God in heaven who knows what happens, and God is also a God of accountability indeed. And where the Spirit was present, he held them accountable. And as they were going about this way of doing things falsely, of bringing about untruthfulness and discord in the church and displeasing the eyes of God, he dealt with it in this manner. You see, when we go far from God and when we harden our hearts, and the more people that are, like, supporting you when you're against God, the stronger you get in your cause, the harder your heart gets, your heart gets. And this is what was happening in this moment. And when you blaspheme, when anyone blasphemes the Holy Spirit, there are consequences. And these people faced it, and they dropped dead. There's an interesting observation that, I can make from this story as the Holy Spirit brings people together and they st- and, and as Christians we stay together, right? People from every nation, tribe, and tongue will be united with Christ forever. But people who are against this cause, they may do it together. But then there's a moment of even of separation. Ananias and Sapphira, together they decided to hold back this money. But then they presented the money before the apostles separately, acting like it was one person and then the other, and like they did not know anything. And so first Ananias goes down, and then Sapphira goes down. But in the end, they sadly had to face the same fate. They were both buried together, says verse 10. So in this story, we see among these things different characteristics of the Holy Spirit. And the first one is the first question that I presented to all of you before us today is who is the Holy Spirit? Let's look again in verses 3 and 5. It says, and Peter told Ananias, how is it that Satan has so filled your heart that you have lied to the Holy Spirit and kept for yourself some of the money you received for the land? And if you fast forward to the end of verse 4, Peter told him, you have not just lied to human beings, you have lied to God. Lying to the community of the church is doing it in the eyes of God. And when one lies against the Holy Spirit, one lies against God because the Holy Spirit is God. And that's the first thing of set, the first characteristic of the characteristic of seven that I would like to point out to you today. Number one, that the Holy Spirit is God. Last week, the subject was the, the, about the doctrine of the Trinity. And just as much as the Son, Jesus, is God, just as much as the Father is God, the Holy Spirit is God. He is all-powerful. He is almighty. He is all-knowing. He is God. The second characteristic that I would like to present to you is the fact that the Holy Spirit is holy. Yes, it is in the name, but we also see it in different events in the Bible. And in this case, in the space of the holiness of the Holy Spirit, sin was not going to continue forever. 
because God is holy and he is separate and the Holy Spirit is holy. And I read to you from Romans chapter 1, verse 4, an example of this, how it's mentioned here. Romans chapter 1, verse 4 says how Jesus, through the Spirit of, how God, pardon me, through the Spirit of holiness, was appointed the Son of God in power by his resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ, our Lord. So the Holy Spirit is God, and the Holy Spirit is holy. The third characteristic that I'd like to mention is the fact that the Holy Spirit is truthful, which lies in direct contrast to what Ananias and Sapphira were doing. He is truthful, and he wants people to be in him in the truth. And so I read to you from John chapter 15, verse 26, how it says, John 15, 26, Jesus telling the disciples, when the advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the spirit of those who are following along, truth, who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me. The Holy Spirit is truthful. He is the spirit of truth. And there are no lies that come from him. But he will even present things to us just how they are. And he gives us the truth according to how it is to Jesus. To the point that he leads us to Jesus who himself is the truth. If we go a little forward in this uh, section in the Bible, the next chapter, in John 16, verses 8 through 11, we find how the Holy Spirit convicts us. He lets us know when something is wrong. It says here in verses 8 through 11 of John 16, when he comes, the Holy Spirit, he will prove the world to be in the wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin because people do not believe in me. About righteousness because I'm going to the Father where you can see me no longer. And about judgment because the prince of this world now stands condemned. The Holy Spirit will prove us wrong Whenever there is something to be that we ought to be proved wrong in. It even reminds me of my mom who is with us today. And the fact that when I am do maybe doing something wrong and she notices it, she is like the first one to keep me in check and to say, mijo, you're wrong. Fix it and be accountable. The Holy Spirit keeps us accountable in our walk with God. He speaks to our conscience, to our own minds to let us know, do this. Spend time with the Lord today. Do what is right. You know what you ought to do in this situation. The Holy Spirit convicts us. The Holy Spirit is also present with us. And this is a beautiful thing. And I turn to Psalm 139. Uh, verse 7, because Jesus, when he gave the Holy Spirit to us, he said that the Holy Spirit would abide with us forever. Now, he's here to stay. And the psalmist, David, observes in Psalm 139.7, he's asking the question, how far can I go from God? He says, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee? from your presence. The Holy Spirit acts today as the intermediary of the presence of God among us. And when the Holy Spirit does something powerful in us, when he is with us, we can know that God indeed is with us. The Holy Spirit is simply present in the good, in the bad, in the pretty, in the ugly. The Holy Spirit is is there. When you and I feel like we're far from God, the Holy Spirit is right there. When we have questions in our hearts and in our minds, the Holy Spirit is right there. The next one is the fact that he fills us. The Holy Spirit 
fills us. There is such a thing. And we see an example of it, and I mentioned it um, already in Acts chapter 2, verse 4, how it says, All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as he, as the Spirit enabled them. So the Holy Spirit filled the believers in this occasion. It's an overflow of the presence of God. How the Holy Spirit can fill our hearts. And when the Holy Spirit fills a place up, it is full of power. Because God is a powerful God. And when God is present somewhere, things change. And things happen. And finally, the Holy Spirit helps us. We see the, an example in Romans chapter 8, how the Holy Spirit is present to help us. And so comes the question, so what? The Holy Spirit is indeed God. He's holy. He's truthful. He convicts us. He's present with us, which is awesome. He fills us. He helps us. So what? I want us to all look together and spend some time in a particular text, in Romans chapter 8, verses 26 and 27. Let us turn there, if it's possible to put it on the screen as well. Romans 8, uh, 26 and 27. And it says... In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. You see, the Holy Spirit, first off, helps us in our weaknesses, meaning that if our weakness is anxiety, the Holy Spirit will help us. If our weakness, our suicidal thoughts, the Holy Spirit can help us. If our weakness is addiction, the Holy Spirit can help us. If our weakness is insincerity, the Holy Spirit can help us. If our weakness is a lack of identity of who we are, the Holy Spirit can help us. And that same chapter says that the Holy Spirit will be a witness to us to let us know that we are children of God. If we struggle with spirituality, with feeling the power of God in our lives, the Holy Spirit will help us. Whatever your weakness is, my brother, whatever your weakness is, my sister, the Holy Spirit will help you because God has a particular place in his heart for you exactly and he will be willing to help you and he helps in such a way that it's like a lawyer who helps someone going before a judge who doesn't even know what to say and I remember years ago with my dad we kind of had a situation like this in which he had a court case based off of something in his record from years before. And I remember leading up to his court, to, to his appointment at the courthouse, there were some concerns. We were thinking like, well, what's going to happen? Um, we don't know how it's going to go down. If my dad's uh, record is going to be able to be cleared up and we would pray before God. And indeed, he also got for himself a lawyer, and the day prior, the lawyer told him, well, we're, we should be fine. It should all be taken care of. And on the same day of the court date, when we were there at the courthouse, we were there sitting, and the lawyer was the one going before him, before the judge, 
presenting the case, and pretty much it was as if the case was already solved. And so it was all good. My dad's record was cleared up, and on top of that, it was stated that the government should be giving a bo- uh, like some money to him as a result of the absolvement of his court case. And in the same way, despite the fact that my dad wouldn't have known how to present his case before the judge, he had a lawyer to help him out. In the same way, when we may not even know what to say in prayer before God, the Holy Spirit himself can speak for you. To the point that we can say, God, you know already. I've got no words. You take care of it. And God will take care of us indeed. The Holy Spirit is our helper. Call on God. Trust in him. It's his intention to help us out. So let us live by faith with the fact that the Holy Spirit will be present to help us. And I want to present something as well. Um, as I begin to transition into the appeal, I want to uh, use some props that I have here and give an example of a phenomenon and really what things are like in our spiritual lives. Uh, let me do it this way. I'm going to ask if, uh, if two volunteers can come and help me out. <laughs> Two people. If there's anyone that can that is willing to come and just give me a hand, I could use some help. Yeah, you can you can come. Whoever, two, any two persons, one more person from from the crowd, from the congregation, you may come. And just give me a hand here. All right. Thank you. Um, so very well. In our lives, we decide um, what we can be filled with. The text said that Ananias and Sapphira, they were filled with Satan. And so sadly, sometimes if you can pour this into this cup, not all of it, leave a little bit. You can fill yourself with, hopefully it doesn't overflow, And yes, at times there is overflow of this with the spirit of evil, of wickedness, of lies, of sinfulness, of addiction. You can be full and and be filled up with these things. And as you, if you live a life that is against the will of God, you don't do what is right. You fill yourself up with the things of evil. You fill yourself up with the things that are against God. On the other hand, you can give me a hand with this bottle right here and pour it right here. We can also fill ourselves up with the word of God, with what the Holy Spirit has to bring, his very own presence, the peace that God gives us. And this is contrasted in a life, um, in two styles of life that is mentioned in Galatians chapter 5, verses Uh, 19 and onward, it says that the acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and such things. One way to fill your life. But the other way has to do with the fruit of the Spirit, which is love Joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And so I'll ask, and even at times in this world, because the enemy wants to confuse us so much, there can be a case in which you may pour in, and you can pour the rest, some of the things of God, and at the same time, some of the things of the wicked one. And that is not a part of God's goal for us. In a point like this, 
What God wants to do with us through the ministry of the Holy Spirit is to purify us, cleanse us, and sanctify us so that we could be blameless and more like Jesus in his sight. Thank you guys very much. And a part of my testimony, indeed, having an example of this, has to do um, with what I would fill my mind with regarding the music that I would listen to. There was a point in my life when, um, like in my late adolescence, when on one end I would listen to music, you know, that worships God, that is constructive, that is good. And on the other hand, music that was, um, well, of the world, romantic and sensual, and at times even explicit. And so I remember that, well, I kind of felt like in my heart, as I was like getting closer to God and, and, and like growing in faith, right, that, well, I'm not too sure about this. And one friend, and I believe that God used him, let me know like, hey, just listen to Christian music, man. Let the secular music you're listening to go. And in my walk with the Lord, I decided, well, let's try it out. And I don't even attribute this to myself. I credit the Holy Spirit with this, that I simply let God work in my heart, and I would worship him more and listen to Christian music and start to fill my mind with the things of God. God is doing a work today in which he wants us to be filled with his spirit. The Bible says, and do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. There is a lot of darkness in this world today, but God gave a promise that the Holy Spirit is going to be poured out on all flesh and that great things are going to happen in the name of God, by the power of God, for the glory of God. And the appeal for all of us today comes with this question. The Holy Spirit wants to fill us, to help us, to be present with us. So what are we going to continue doing in our walk with the Lord? Let us consider ourselves and see what are we filling ourselves with? Is it with the things of the world, the things that are against God? Are we mixing things up? Or are we with the help of God in prayer, in the study of the word, in fellowship with him, seeking to be more like Jesus. If there is anyone in this place today who wants to seek more of the Lord and to get closer to this, you may feel free to stand, to cut as the whole congregation stands as we come to our closing prayer or our final prayer for this message. And if you want a special prayer, wanting the Spirit to fill your life, you may come forward for a special prayer. And I am the first one to present myself before God, to pray that God may fill me with more of Him. And if you, between you and God, are considering, well, there is more left in me. I need more of God today. I need more of his presence, of his conviction, of his holiness, and of his truth. Seek him in prayer. And you may come. We will be praying for you. Let us also keep, um, as you come up, let us also keep um, Chaplain White in prayer. She wasn't able to be with us today. She's not feeling good. So we will pray for the Spirit of God to be present with us today, on Sunday, on Monday, on Tuesday, throughout all the week, and for the rest of our lives. Let us pray. 
Blessed Father and Holy God, we want to just pour ourselves out to you and pray that you may pour out your spirit onto us. More than just a teaching, more than just getting it right, God, this is about what we do when we wake up. What we do when we go to work, to school. What we do in this place, God, fill us with your presence, Lord. Is this not your desire? Is it not stated in your word that you are going to pour out your spirit among the whole world? And God, as you continue to move around the world, we pray for our nation today. And we pray for our community and we pray for this church, Lord. Be present among us, God. We need you now more than ever. We pray that you may be with Chaplain White, that your healing hand may be upon her, Lord God, that you may be with us who are presented here before you today, praying, God, that we may be filled with more of you since we just want you. We implore and pray for your presence at all times. And you hear us, God. We pray this with faith before you, and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.